Hey everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to make this seamless meta ball like mitosis like bullshit. Uh, normally when you have mitosis it splits two cells but in this case we have three. Either way, uh, I'm going to show you how to make this procedurally using only shader stuff and uh, let's get it. So uh, because this is a shading result I'm just going to be doing a, a plain thing and just projecting the thing we're going to be making onto it. Um, and all the work is going to be done in the shading workspace and I should mention um, I am using a 3.0 alpha for this, but I don't think it matters that much. So just use whatever you want. Okay, so um, why is Eevee so slow? I don't know. Um, so all of everything we're gonna be doing is gonna be a material effect, and what do we want? We basically want uh, three circles spinning um, and somehow fusing in and out of each other. So uh, to do that, what we need is a coordinate system. I'm just gonna use texture coordinates and I'm gonna be using uh, object coordinates because they're the easiest for this, by the way. Uh, these node previews, it's an add-on called node preview, link in the description. So uh, to get the uh, kind of coordinates for these three traveling circles, uh, what we want to do is we basically want to kind of give the mathematical expression uh, for a point that is going around our plane. And then we calculate the distance from that point to our texture coordinates, long story short. So how do we get one of these points? Uh, well, because it's uh, traveling in a circle, it probably makes sense to use sines and cosines since those are uh, literally the functions, I want math, not vector math, uh, that give the X and Y coordinate along a unit circle. So let's do that. So I'm gonna have a sine. I'm also gonna have a cosine. For these, I don't actually want node previews. That's a bit distracting. Uh, so one of these are sines, one of these are cosines, and the thing we are going to input into it, I guess we can just do it right in the math thing, is basically a time expression. So it should, it should evolve over time. I'm gonna be using the hash frame driver. This is the only driver I ever use that gives us the frame number. So frame eight, nine, 10, whatever. I'm gonna slow down time by dividing it by 10. And let's just connect that here, here, and uh, use this as a, a vector for our point. Um, typically, you would use a cosine as the x coordinate, though. Not, not too important. So either way, uh, cosine goes for x, sine goes for y, and you can see uh, now we basically have an evolving vector that just kind of looks like a bunch of colors. Uh, but what this really serves the purpose as, or for, um, it gives us the coordinate of one of these spinning points, uh, which means if we now uh, do a distance function like a vector math, uh, we compare our object coordinate system to this and we calculate the distance, distance. Uh, you can see, boop, we have a circle and it's traveling, which is cool. Um, basically, uh, we now take this process and repeat it <laughs> um, and get the uh, other two. Uh, but before I do that, let me just um, modify this a bit. I don't like the size of it too much. So I'm just going to go to scale and I'm going to make it 0.5 or something like that and connect it. Um, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to scale this uh, circle vector thing that we made, uh, which basically means change the radius at which it's revolving with. Okay, so I'm going to make it instead of go on a unit circle, like a 0.5 radius uh, circle. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we have everything we need uh, for this. Uh, so let's just kind of uh, generalize this and make it uh, reusable. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of an addition here. The reason I'm doing this is if we add something before doing the sines and cosines, it basically acts as an offset. So here's where we, what we have right now. I could add a bit of offset, and then it's just going to keep doing the same thing. So in other words, to get the other two circles that are revolving, uh, we're just going to add a bit of offset without like redoing all the work. So I'm just going to make this a controllable parameter. And I'm going to turn all this into a node group, I believe. So let's see. Is that correct? Uh, yes. OK, so I think we literally take everything, control G to make it a node group. So now we have our circular node group. And we also have this uh, parameter that we can control. Again, that's going to be the offset. Um, and now we can just make our other two circles. So this is where stuff gets really fast. We make two other node groups. Um, I'm going to keep their node previews for now so we can see them. Uh, one of them, I want them, uh, one of the circles, I want to be one third more progressed on this uh, evolution so that they're spaced by a third of the circle. Um, I believe the way this works is since it's an angle and the phase, a complete cycle is 2 pi trigonometrically, I think what we want to put in is 2 pi, which is a full revolution, divided by 3. And we'll see what that does, yeah. So that, that will give us a third of a full revolution. And then the next one is uh, 2 pi over 3 times 2, since now we have 2 thirds. So that's the same thing as 4 times pi divided by 3. Hopefully you guys can follow. Um, and you can see, if you kind of compare these, they are offset by a third. Uh, the way we uh, actually incorporate all of them 
and you might think, oh, why don't we just take like a minimum? And you could. Uh, what we're going to take is a smooth minimum, and I'll explain this in a second. For now, don't worry too much about it. Um, I'm going to take the smooth minimum of all of these, which is actually going to make sure that we can uh, see all of them at the same time. So you can see we indeed have our three circles. Um, and the minimum, or the smooth minimum when it's equal, the distance is equal to zero, basically says take these three uh, distance functions and output the uh, smallest value for each of these, which will make them show up. Uh, what the smoothness actually does for us, and the reason uh, that I have it, is that uh, we can set this to a different number. And you see when we make this bigger and bigger and bigger, they start fusing. Basically what this means is instead of taking a minimum, uh, whenever these two or three distance functions are very close to equaling each other, like it could really go either way, uh, we're gonna apply some smoothing. So it's not gonna go to either, but it's gonna interpolate a little. And that's what this gives us. This is actually the same math that creates a, a meta ball. Um, okay. What this means now is if we like now take this whole distance function thing and find a way to visualize it, you could do this with a greater than, a less than, whatever. Uh, we now have this revolving thing that we can control the fusing value of. Let me make these smaller so you can actually see this. So you can see fused, not fused, fused, not fused, um, et cetera. Okay. Uh, to make this visually more interesting though, what I recommend is we have the, it's not just like, we have this whole distance function thing, right? We don't need to just do a greater than or less than. We have a whole continuum of data to work with. So I'm thinking what we do is we throw this through a modulo, which will make it repeat in this nice way. And we can actually control the kind of size and, you know, kind of the spacing between this repetition. Uh, so we do it like this, right? And then we throw it through a greater than, less than situation. I don't know what the number should be, though. Something like this. 0.125, let's say, an eighth. I don't know why, but it seems like a... An appropriate number. Maybe if we make this 0.25, then that would make sense. I'm actually going to turn this into, eh, no, I like it this way. Um, okay, so we have this. Um, again, the reason that it looks uh, so much more complicated now is we threw this through a modulo, which basically means take this, repeat it. We're going to get more detail out of this, and then we kind of filter it through this greater than, less than. Um, okay, so we have this thing, but let's not forget we have this fusing value uh, that now when we uh, modify it, it looks uh, interesting. So what I'm thinking is let's not set this to a constant fusing value, uh, but let's have this also be a thing that animates. So instead, let's throw this through some math. Uh, again, we can use sines and cosines. Anything that repeats can be kind of approximated this way. Um, so we're going to do a hash frame divided by, let's say, 20. So again, that's going to be the frame number, but 20 times slower. Let's see what that looks like. So I want what I'm looking at right now is, is this fusing taking too long? Is it at a good speed? Whatever. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is that it fuses, and then for a long time it's not uh, working. Uh, again, this is because sines and cosines have a negative one-to-one kind of output. So I just want to see what values we care about. So zero to like two, or maybe one to two are good values. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, uh, we take this, which again outputs from negative one to one. Uh, the cool looking values are something like one to two. Uh, we take this, we throw it through map range. So I'm going to take this input from negative one to one. So I'm just remapping the potential outputs this sign can have. We go from negative one to one to let's say one to two. And this will give us uh, the interesting parts of this uh, continuum, I think. Yeah, that, lo that looks pretty good. Um, I do want the fusing to happen a bit faster. So let's only divide time by 10 so that it will uh, happen twice as fast. And I don't think this is, a, by the way, I don't think this is the exact result I showed you in the beginning, but I do think it's a good approximation of it. So um, either way, you can take this technique and kind of like generalize it so you can have an arbitrary number of like mitosis cellular things. This is how you get triplets maybe. Um, you can have four of these, five of these, or uh, you can actually make a generalized expression that makes us not need to repeat this node group, I think. Um, either way, though, I think uh, the, the process makes sense. So we made this distance function that revolves, uh, offset them for each of these. We then combine them with smooth minimum, threw this through modulo, greater than, less than filtering, and uh, we have this output result. So you just take this and render it, and I think uh, that it happens to be the whole story. So... A 10-minute tutorial. I, I always like it when it turns out that way. So um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something about whether it be the smooth minimum or just how to like get something to go around in a circle or just the modular trick. I hope you learned something in this. Uh, this is kind of in the vein of the micro tile tutorials I used to make. Either way, uh, what you're seeing on the side, list of, I think it's 769. Yeah, 69. Uh, 
uh, patrons. Coincidentally, very nice. Um, it's a li- it's a list of people that thought it'd be worth uh, joining uh, the Patreon. What do you get? You get early access to tutorials, so you could see them a couple days early in some cases. Um, you get access to exclusive tutorials that I upload every once in a while that are not available on either this channel or CG Matter channel. Um, and finally, you get this bun file and any other bun file I've ever made. So if you just want this project to fiddle around with, I will make that available as a blend uh, pretty soon. So. Uh, Patreon exists. Uh, check it out if you want to. If you don't, don't. And um, thank you for watching this very exciting Blender tutorial. And yeah.